The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to lesson 79 of your distance learning session for Geology Advanced Level, Upper Six Science with Kenneth Yosimbom. Our lesson 79 is focused on revision and integration activity three. Through this lesson, we will have some objectives. We have review and, re uh, and do a revision of the whole topic on map work and photo interpretation. Then we'll have some integration activities. Now, we shall review and answer MCQs as well as AC questions related to um, uh, the revision and integration activities three. That is, will be based on map work and photo interpretation. Now, we look at the review of map work. On that map work, we saw integration of or uh, interpretation of geologic features on maps, where we saw the different types of maps. Categories of geological maps, characteristics of geologic maps, direction and orientation on maps, scales of maps, so conventional geological uh, symbols on maps, we saw uh, geometrical properties of strata on maps, and then we saw strike lines, the three point problems. Geological history. We also went ahead and saw a, a chain of lessons on geological cross sections. Then we ended this uh, first portion by looking at interpretation of geological structures. Now, under photo interpretation, we saw identification of geological photographs. We also looked at description of geological photographs. We look at the whole uh, summary of the different lessons that we covered during our lesson under the topic map work and photo interpretation. So we saw different types of maps. We saw uh, topographic maps represented by this map. We saw hydrographic maps. We saw demographic maps. And we equally saw geological maps. So we saw four main types of maps. Again, we looked at the different categories of geological maps, where we said there are drift maps. And you can see where there is the blinking is blinking, the, 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 there is drip map and it is indicated on the map by the sealed where the arrow is blinking. And then at the key as well. Then secondly, we saw uh, solid maps where the arrow is uh, blinking at the key with the different rock types as displaced by the different colors on the map. So practically, there are two categories of geological maps. We have drift and solid maps. 
They call it have the way, we saw the way geologic information are exposed in the field or occur in the field as exposures and as hard crops. Now, we looked at the characteristics of geological maps. We say any geological map must have a key or a title. Where what is blinking is the title of this map. Geological survey sheet in brackets, uh, solid and drift. Then we say that a geological map must have a scale. And that a good geological map again must have a column, the key or the legend. Then we saw direction and orientation on maps. Represented by this diagram, you realize that you have the four, the six, uh, the four, the eight, and the sixteen quadrant with their bearings represented. That is cardinals and bearing represented by our diagram. Now we saw Greek references on maps. We say that Greek references are small squares and uh, they have, uh, when we have vertical lines that are increasing in value from west to east, we call them eastings. As you can see where the arrow is blinking up, that is where you have the values either at the top or at the bottom of the map. We have, <coughs> we have the nodings represented by the arrow pointing up. That is to say that when we have horizontal lines increasing in value from the south to the north, we call them the nodings. Using brief reference, we can be able to identify different structures on maps. And we quote them in both four figures and six figures. <coughs> we saw skills on maps. We saw maps with fractional scales, like what is blinking. There, the scale is 1 is to 40,000. We also saw a bar scale, the case where there is a line segment and is graduated. Then, we saw conventional geologic symbols on maps. We saw symbols for loose materials as well as solid materials. Then we looked at geometrical properties on maps. We said that where contour lines are parallel to bed boundaries is a horizontal strata. And then where uh, we have a vertical, or where we have vertical beds, the contours are straight lines and they present uh, a straight line outcrop pattern. We equally so maps with sloping beds. And we say that where we have sloping beds, uh, the outcrops are, we can vis visualize it well at the level of a valley where we can judge from the view. We saw beds dipping downstream with uh, where uh, with the deep less than the valley gradient, and for the case of beds dipping uh, uh, downstream with slope greater than uh, the valley gradient, then we equally establish the fact that the thickness of a bed T is expressed as T equals to vertical thickness cos theta. And that the width of an outcrop gives the idea of the thickness of a bed and is determined by the expression W equals to T sine theta or sine alpha. We saw the different strike lines on maps. And we say to draw strike lines on maps, we have to follow some steps. Firstly, you Draw a strike line where the same contour crosses the same bed boundary more than once. And you can establish the different strike lines where they are. Uh, there are irregularities with strike lines, you know that there is folding. 
but where the pattern of strike lines are regular with equal spacing. Know that it is an area that is inclined. So the three-point problems. How to establish or resolve three-point problems. We said that to resolve a three-point problem, you need to, in a map, identify three points. Like the case of this map, point A, points B, and C. And then you draw a straight line linking point, the, the, the point with the lowest contour or the lowest value and the one with the highest value. Like the case of this map, we would have drawn at A with 150 and at C with 250. Then we get the master, master strike line and then we can develop other strike lines. Then we looked at geological history on maps. We said to establish the geological history of a map, we need to use the mnemonic S S S S I G H, where the first S stands for succession, the second for structures, the third for uh, the I with uh, igneous bodies. And then G with geomorphology, morphology, and then you can now establish the history of the area represented. So, like the case of this map, we have A, B, C, and D. D was the first uh, information because it is succession, then followed by uh, C, which is a fold. And then thirdly by a B, which is a fracture. And then uh, lastly, you have A, which is a dike. Because the fault is not displacing the dike. Meaning that the fault was there first before the, 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 the dike came later. We saw uh, geological cross sections and the steps of how to draw sections on, uh, uh, on maps. So... This is an example of a map. This is a, a section line. And then this is the cross section. This is the cross section of that map. We saw the different steps. Then we equally uh, saw interpretation of geological structures on maps. We said that uh, recognition and describing features Drawing cross sections and deducing geological history is a way to interpret geological structures on geological maps. Now, this is an example of a map, solid and draped geological map. On this map, you have you can identify a fold. This is a fold axe with dips towards each other, so it is a syncline. You can also identify a fault with visible displacement, and then you can identify an unconformity. That is the blue line, that is a plane of unconformity. You can also see igneous body, that is lava flow, and you can see a dike. And then you can also uh, spot out surface deposits with the presence of what? A sea. And then you also have a river, which indicates alluvium. So that is a cross section of what this map carries, an exemplary of a geological map. Now we shall go into integration activities. In our integration activities, we have different train of questions. We have paper one type questions and paper three type questions because map work in particular is very essential for paper one and paper three, which is practicals. Photo interpretation is also essential for paper one and paper three, which are practical related topics. So we will, in each question, have three options, uh, four options, with only one correct. Question number one. Study the hydrographic map below and answer the questions that follow. If you look at this hydrographic map, you realize that there is the other one, the other two, 
the order three, and then the main order is four. So this is a map that shows the hydrographic network of an area. So question, which geological feature is formed when tributary two and three join in the map? The right answer is uh, A, that is capture. It cannot be drainage patterns because the uh, drainage patterns simply show the way the different streams in the area are drained. And then dendrite is uh, the name of a particular, a particular type of a drainage pattern. Then rejuvenation is when you have headward erosion along a river course. So the correct answer is capture or piracy, which is A. Then, um, two, which of the following geologic features is most likely represented in, uh, in drift maps? A. Dikes and seals. B. Exposed cliffs. C. Quarries. D. River alluvium. Remember that we are talking about drift maps. So the correct answer is uh, D. River alluvium. River alluvium are loose materials. And when you have loose materials represented in a map, we call that map a drift map. Then you observe this uh, other map. That is a map with different elements. You have the line of section and you have different rock types represented with their symbols. Now, question. Name the rock that are crop at the northeast portion of the map. This is the northeast portion of the map. So which rock is outcropping there? You look, that is a symbol for limestone. So the rock outcropping there is limestone. Then, identify the type of dipping of the beds. A, B, C and D below. This is bed A. You look at the deep and then look at how the beds are closing. That is the direction. But here you have the deep. These deeps are away. These deeps are also away. And then here the deeps are also away. But this is the direction. This is uh, the deep is uh, this is these are the deeps, but this is the direction in which they are cropped. So here is horizontal, here is inclined, here is inclined, this is also inclined. So case A, B, and B, C, and D will be A is a sloping antiform, B is sloping antiform, C is a sloping antiform, and D is a horizontal antiform. This is D. Look at the way this uh, arrow is pointing. Then you observe this photo. In that photo, you have uh, uh, feature A, feature B, and feature C. Now, what is expected of us? Deduce the oldest and the youngest event in photo in the photo provided below. Now, when you look at that, if you look at this, is a, B is a rock mass, and A is a vein that has been displaced. And C is the vein displacing. So you realize that the first information in that area would have been uh, B, which is the rock mass, then followed by A, uh, A, which is the vein that has been displaced, then lastly by C, which is the vein displacing. So the order of events in that area will be what? The rock mass, then you have uh, uh, vein A followed, and then lastly vein C or so the fourth. Then question six is related to this map. Now, from the map beside, what is the significance of the cross mark? A. This is a cross mark. Is a cross mark and another cross mark. So, what is the significance? A. Bed line parallel. B. Bed line vertically. C. Bed inclined to deep direction. D. Bed line horizontally. 
Our correct answer is D. It is a bed line horizontally. We say that when that cross is on a bed, it indicates that it's an area that has not been affected by tectonic activity. So it is lying horizontally. Question 7 is still related to the map. Which type of unconformity is represented on the map beside? This is the map. If you look at this bed, it's lying. The, these two beds are lying horizontally on beds that are dipping. So if we were tracing the plane of unconformity, you would trace here. So A, parallel. B, heterolytic. C, angular. D, non-depositional. The correct answer is C. That is an angular on conformity because horizontal bed or horizontal beds are lying on inclined beds. So they will obviously have different dips. So it's an angular on conformity. Question 8. What is the name of the feature trending southeast, northwest of the map beside? This is our map. This is the a structure trending. This is not, uh, southeast. Is southeast, and then you have northwest. So that structure, you realize that it is cutting across beds. So A, fault. B, seal. Uh, C, dike. D, conglomerate. So which is the correct answer? The correct answer is C, dike. It's a structure cutting across other, it's a linear structure cutting across other beds. Then, question 9. The diagram A below represents, if you look at that diagram, you will realize that there is a forward axe with dips away. And the forward axe has a direction. So, A, a double plunging anticline. B, a plunging syncline. C, an outlier. D, a plunging anticline. Our correct answer is... D, the plunging anticline. Then, uh, question 10 is also related to this map. Now, the geologic structure shown on the northwest portion of the map is, this is the northwest portion of our map. The northwest portion you can see a dip on this bed away and another dip on the same bed away. So dips are away. So that way, when dips are away, we know the kind of structure. So A, a structural dome. B, an inlier. C, a non-plunging syncline. D, double plunging asymmetrical anticline. So our correct answer is D. It is a double plunging asymmetrical Anticline. Now, still on that map, the line X, X, X to X in the map represents, this is the line X to X. So it represents, if you look at along that, you will realize that uh, it is uh, a zone where you have some distractions and uh, there is displacement. So A, fault plane. B, unconformity plane. C, section line. D, fold, ax, uh, fold axis. Which is the correct answer? The correct answer is uh, A, that is a fault plane. Now, question 12 is also related to that map. Geologic section through A and B will show, that is the geologic section. This is A and B. Remember that we are saying that this is an anticline, so this should be also a syncline because the dips are towards each other. So it is through A, plunging syncline and anticline. B, double plunging anticline and syncline. Then C, anticline and syncline. D, non-plunging synclines. Our correct answer is C, anticline and syncline. Now, question 13 is related to this map. So you observe that map and you answer question 13. What is the tightness of the syncline shown at the, cent the central portion of the map? This is the central portion of the map. 
you see dips towards each other with dip values being 50, uh, 60 and 60. So if we sum uh, 60 plus 60, you have uh, 100 and uh, equals 120. If we subtract 120 degrees, if we subtract 180 minus 120, you will be at 60. You'll be at 60 degrees. And 60 falls between 30 and 70. So the tightness of the, of the fold should be closed. That is C is the correct option. Now, question 14. State the type of fold shown in the map. This is again the map. This is a fault. So which type of fault is that? It is visible displacement and on a fault. So A, strike slip. B, oblique slip. C, net slip. D, deep slip. Which is the correct answer? The correct answer is D. It is a deep slip movement. Then you have Map, uh, uh, the, this equation 15 concerns this map. Now, name and deduce the dip of feature F on the map. This is feature F. And on that feature F, you have this, our small circle with a cross inside. So, A, lava flow with horizontal dip. B, unconformity with vertical dip. C, fold with horizontal dip. And D, seal with horizontal dip. The correct answer is A. Lava flow with horizontal dip. Now, question seven, uh, 16. The feature with older sandstone core bed is this is this feature with older sandstone bed. A. Structural basin. B. Structural dome. C. Outlier. D. Inlier. Our correct answer is D, in layers. In layers have the old bed at the curb, completely surrounded by uh, younger beds. Then 17 is on the photograph. The, the, the feature shown on the photograph above or beside is most likely to be A. Look at the photo, there is bending and twisting. So A, jointing. B, veins. C, folding. D, faulting. Our correct answer is uh, C, folding, because there is bending and twisting. Now, the diagnostic characteristic feature identify, uh, identify the feature, the photograph, the feature of the photograph, the feature shown on the photograph above is most likely to be A, bending and twisting of beds. B, Breaking and displacement. C. Cross cutting of structures. And D. Conformable beds. The correct answer is A. Bending and twisting of bed. Then, practical type equations. For well, practical type equation, we have this map. And on that map, we are expected to, with reference to the geological map above, A. Find the bar scale of the map. B. From the bar scale above, find the ratio scale of the map. And then D, uh, two, describe the folding of the rocks. Three, describe the folding of the rocks. And then question four, identify with reasons the feature having an almost north to south trend. And B, what is the relationship of the contour 400 and the conglomerate formation? Then C, identify with reasons the type of unconformity. Then, question 5, draw a cross section along the line of section from A to B using the profile below. Add a key. Then, uh, provide, uh, briefly de uh, describe the geological history of the area shown by the map. That is, our practical type questions are asked. So, from that map, we have to go to the map scale. You look at the map scale, you have the bar scale, we have to measure it. And when we measure, we have it that uh, the bar scale, 1.5 centimeters equal to 1 kilometer. And then the B part, now we now use our uh, formula to solve. So to solve, we 
Now use the formula S equal to uh, 1 all over L. So this way, our the distance on the map is 1.5 centimeters. And uh, the distance on land is 1 kilometer, which is equal to 100,000 centimeters. So that way, we can come out with our scale. So the scale is 1 over 67,000. Then folds on that map. If you look at, at this portion of the map, there is a core bed with dolomite. And dolomite is older, so that should be an anticline. And then here you have the core bed younger with tough. Tough is younger, so the core bed, the fold type is a syncline. So fold one. At the west portion of the map is plunging asymmetrical anticline. The old core bed. Dolomite is progressively surrounded by younger beds, mudstone, shell, and limestone. So the bed thickness differ. Then the train, the, the, the four trains eastward, uh, eastward, uh, east-west, and the plunges eastward. Then it is affected by a dike and the fault B. Then for fold two, and like we have seen at the northeast portion of the map is what? A plunging asymmetrical syncline. The younger corn bed tough is progressively surrounded by older beds, quasi and sandstone. And then the bed thickness differ. And the full train eastward and plunges eastward. Affected by what? Fault A. Therefore, is younger than the formation in which it is occurring. Then we bring back the map again because we want to talk now fault. We have Fault A is fault A, and then here you have fault B. Now, <coughs> fault A at the northeast portion is deep slip normal fault. The fold axis is not displaced. That is the justification. And the, the, the deep and the throw are to the east, and it trends north south and is younger than the sink line that is affected. Then for B, is at the southwest portion of the map and is a strike slip fall. Why? Because the, the fold axe is displaced. Then, if you look at intrusions on that map and as well as on conformity, you take note of contour 400. Contour 400 is lying parallel to the conglomerate bed. And then you have this structure that is lying almost uh, south or north-south. So, now question 4 required that we should identify with reason the feature having an almost north and south train. So it is a dike. Why? Because it's a linear structure and it cuts across dolomite, and mudstone, shell, uh, shell, limestone and sandy beds. Then, the relationship is that uh, between 400 and the conglomerate bed is the fact that they are, they are parallel. The contour 400 is parallel to that conglomerate bed. So the bed is lying horizontal. Then, with reason, state the type of unconformity. Since it, the conglomerate bed is lying horizontal on folded beds, it is an angular unconformity. Now, to come up with our cross section, you put your section paper along the line of section from A to B, then you track down the information. This is a syncline, this is an anticline. So when you get that information, remember that this is a dike, and then this is fault uh, B, and this is fault A. So if you do that, then this is what you will come up with. That is the cross section of that map with faults and all the structures represented. The scale is there, the, how we got the section, and the direction of the north. Those are the peculiarities of a cross section. Now, we are to describe the history. There is the position of what? Dolomite, mudstone, shell, limestone, sandstone, quasite, and tuff. Then, after which there was what? Folding, and then the fault came in. Then fault, uh, the dike came in, and then fault A. Then the unconformity and fault B. So fault B is the last thing in that area because it is displacing the unconformity. Then this photo identify and interpret the photo. 
Of course, it is 14 because there is visible displacement and 14 is related with tensional forces and then it occurs during rock deformation when when the uh, during uh, that is with stress strain effect that is the diagram okay now we have come to the end of our revision and integration session we will now concentrate to work on the next phase of our lessons see you in our next lesson Unna tege si ma tege yop Unna tege minga ma tege nyum Unna tege majang ma tege ndom Mane tambia ninya ne njubya yen Ngani bana ma tege mut Ngani la kiri wa tege ndong Esa kina bia jinkido Mane tambia ninya ne njubya yen Tam tama mote tam zabike Tam tama tonge tam zabike tam tam tama mote tam zabike mane tambia ninya ne injo biyen